the way that God would bless me. But there's so much more. There's so much more than that. ups and downs. Um, God has blessed me to have um, you know, a wonderful family, um, a wonderful church family who pours into me, um, who treats me as their family. Um, <clears throat> it's made me a better man, a better man of God, um, a better son, a better father, brother and um, he's stayed faithful to me through it all he stayed faithful to me when I didn't have it um, he stayed faithful to me you know um, and when I was out of work um, I was searching for something to do you know and the pastor had suggested something to me and all of a sudden I found myself here at the church helping more trying to be as busy as I could which actually helped because it was taking my mind off the stress of not having work and through that time um, I just grew in serving and I found that I like serving, <laughs> you know, I like being behind the scenes and helping others, helping my church family. So um, I'm just grateful to share this with everyone and the power at which God changed someone's, changed someone's life. <laughs> if I just give, give him my best and do the best that I could, yes, and he would, um, he would take care of the rest, yes, um, and that's it. <laughs> that's all right, thank you. Amen. Powerful, powerful testimony. Amen. Let us now prepare to worship the Lord in our tithes and our offerings. You can also text to give by texting Metro to 73256. Let's get our offering in our right hand. Praise the Lord in prayer. Affirmation we give because we're blessed. We're blessed because we give. Therefore, we are never without.
shall we pray. Thank you, Lord. And we're so thankful that the blood still works. That's why we're here. We come bringing our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings to the Lord because you've been so good to us. So we ask you, Lord, that you would bless each gift, each offering, and each tithe that has been presented, and that you use them in the way that you designed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. still works. The blood still, it still works. Metropolitan, we got a preacher in the house this morning. The preacher this morning is Reverend Jamel K. Robinson, a beloved son of this Metropolitan house. We love Reverend Robinson. He got his undergrad from SUNY, his master's degree of theological studies from Luther Rice Seminary. He's working on a uh, second master's degree, and he just had twins. We, Reverend Robinson is doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it. He, uh, he serves as the uh, councilman of the fifth ward in the city of Albany Common Council. He's an elected official about the community, and he can preach, y'all. Stretch your hand to Reverend Robinson. Say, Reverend Robinson, preach the word.
God, we thank you. We honor you today. And God, we thank you that you have the ability to put us back together again. After life has dropped us, after life has mishandled us and misused us, you can put us back together again. So we praise your name today. Now, God, I ask that you do what you do best to think with my mind, to see with my eyes, to speak with my mouth, to fill with my heart the needs of your people. Because all we need is a word from you. Because our one word will remove all doubt. It will cause the sun to shine and bring peace of mind. Speak, Lord. Your people are awaiting. It's in Jesus' name that we all say hallelujah, hallelujah. and amen. Amen. Put your hands together and give God the best praise you can give him in this place today. Certainly give honor to the spirit of Christ in this place. It is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Certainly to the angel and star and watchman of this house, to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Damone Paul Johnson and our leading lady, Lady Johnson. I want to thank him for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. Also to all the other preachers that grace the pulpit, to my great friend, Reverend Michael Poindexter, certainly to Reverend Gomes and all the other associates, to our deacons, trustees, and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation. God is good. And all the time, God is good, certainly to my wife, uh, Miss Lynette D. Robinson, and two new additions to our family, Zari and Zakari. Thank you. But there is a word from the Lord. There's a word from the Lord in Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. Romans, the fifth chapter. start with the first verse, Roman chapter 5, beginning with the first verse, I will be reading from the New Life Version, Romans chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, when you have it, say amen. amen, if you don't say hold up, all right, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, now that we have been made right with God, by putting our trust in him, we have peace with him. It is because of what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us. By putting our trust in God, he has given us his loving favor and has received us. We are happy for the hope we have of sharing the shining greatness of God. We are glad that we are also glad for our troubles. We know that troubles help us learn not to give up. When we have learned not to give up, it shows that we have stood the test. And when we have stood the test, it gives us hope. Hope never makes us ashamed because the love of God has come into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. We were weak and could not help ourselves. Then Christ came at the right time and gave his life for all sinners. No one is willing to die for another person, but for a good man, someone might be willing to die. But God showed his love to us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Verse 8, but God showed his love to us while we were sinners, Christ died died for us. This is the word of the Lord. I want to use as a subject for our brief conversation this morning, we found love in a hopeless place. We found love in a hopeless place. I have a friend who, like Reverend Poindexter, loves cars, he loves expensive cars. And so this one particular um, occasion, uh, he uh, 
graduated from school and he decided that he was going to gift himself with a car. So he went to the dealership, brought the car, then he brought it to my, my, my house, called me up on the phone and said, Mel, you gotta come outside, take a look at my new car. So I went, went down the stairs, went outside and there it was, a BMW shining, chrome rims, and navigation system, had all the bells and the whistles. It was a beautiful car. So I told him I want to drive this car around the block. So I hopped in the car, drove it around the block, got on the highway, went up the highway, came back. It was a nice car, a nice car, a nice car. And so a couple of weeks later, I'm driving to work, and I see this friend standing at the bus stop. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm saying, he just bought a new car. Why is he standing at, at the bus stop? So I rolled down my window. He says, yo, Mel, can you take me to work? <laughs> take me to work. I said, yeah, get in, get in. So he gets in the car, and I don't want to ask him the question, but I have to ask him the question. So I just say, uh, so how's a new car working out? How, how's a new car working out? He said, man, a week after I got the car, I I, I totaled the car. I got into a, a car accident. He said they had to, you know, uh, take the car because I got into a car accident. And he said, you know, now I had to pick up a second job because the insurance only covered a certain portion of the car accident. So I have to get another job and go to work to, you know, pay off the rest of the loan for the car. I said, yeah, man, that's messed up. That's messed up. Messed up. So then a couple more weeks passed. Friend calls me up on the phone. Mel, I got a new car. You you made the money that fast to so where you can pay off the loan. And I want to do what you do, you know. So I came downstairs, and this was a newer model BMW. It had all the bells and whistles shining, all all the bells and whistles. So I asked him. I said, "You said that you know you had to work to pay off the rest of the loan." And he said, "Yeah, as a, I got a forty thousand dollar loan for the car." company only covered, you know, 30000 of it, so I had to, you know, work to pay 10000 off. I said, okay, well, how did you make the money that fast to pay it off? He said, well, um, one day I opened up some mail, and a car dealer told me to give him a call. So I gave him a call. He said, hey, I want you to come in. I got some new cars for you to look at. And you got into a car accident, so I want you to come in and to look at some new cars. He said, well, sir, I can't. I can't, you know, purchase a new car. I still got this outstanding balance on the loan. I can't you know, purchase a new car right now. He said, no. He said, do you remember when we set up your loan, we put something on there called gap insurance? And he said, with gap insurance, what gap insurance does is it covers the rest of the debt that the insurance company doesn't pay. My brothers and sisters, that's like me and you here. We have wrecked some things in life. We have ruined some things in life. And sometimes that can make us hopeless. But I have a God who has equipped us with some gap insurance. So guess what? So the debt that we would have owed, we do not have to pay. And who is that gap insurance? By somebody by the man of Jesus who stood in the gap for us and who has declared us righteous. Is there anybody in here that is thankful today that you have some gap insurance that no matter our mess ups and our hang ups, our failures and our shortcomings that God will step in and cover the rest of the balance so we do not have to pay a debt that we owe. Turn to your neighbor and say you don't have to pay the debt. You don't have to pay the debt because God stood in between. Curtains of our text opens up, and here we see the Apostle Paul making his case that we are justified by faith and not our works. In chapter 4, Paul uses the evidence of two witnesses. He recalls the time where God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 that his descendants would number the stars, be as number of the stars in the sky. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him and he was declared justified. Paul then recalls David's account in Psalm 32 where David laments 
says that there is nothing he can do by works to rise him. Paul wants you and I to understand that he says, God has dropped the charges and we have been acquitted. That's good news for sentence. You did the crime, but you do not have to serve the sentence. And sometimes we have to be for forgiveness. You thought if you came to church every Sunday that it would cover your sin. You thought if you dropped it would cover your sin. You thought if you got most of the matter is that it's God's great love. We are justified. Paul said, he said, peace withstands how important justification is in the life of the believer. Because of humanity's rebellion against God, God has every right, declares the Lord, I will repay. And the Lord will judge his people, defend myself, a theological imagination to protect us from God's God. Is there anybody in here happy today that you have peace with God? Have peace with God. Paul shifts in the text to address our situation, saying that if you faith has the power to say our glad for our troubles is because God has the we think we are. That's why Paul says we know that troubles help us learn not it gives us hope. Is there anybody in here today ever had your back up against the wall and you didn't know how things were going? That's when God would count you in. The reason why you're sitting here on the temporary, you learn that the situation can't hold you. You learn that it's a deliverer. You learn that God is lessons in life ain't taught in Sunday school. The best lessons in life ain't taught at endure hardship like a good soldier. Is there anybody what I went through? It was when my back was against the wall. Is there anybody in here that will bring you that looks like endure? I, I know it may look bad, but all you got to do is endure. He says that no one is willing to die for another person. It was to lay down his life for people who are not deserving. And while we are worse yet living in said that God chose to send his sliding. When we were out in the world dipping and dashing, God still loved us. While we were out in the world doing our thing, while we was out in the world lying and cheating, God decided that he still loved us. And while we were yet in our sinful state, God still chose to die for us. Is there anybody in here that's glad this morning that God still chose to die for you? That there wasn't nothing that you did. Yeah, you were still out there doing your thing. But God said, I still love him. God said, I still love her. And I will still choose to go to the cross for her. And that's why I thank God for Jesus. Because no matter what I do, no matter my mess ups or my hang ups, my failure or my shortcomings, God still chose to die for me. And I thank God for that today. Uh, I, I had a friend who is tax season, so he was doing his taxes. And um, he um, called me upset and said, Mel, um, I, I normally owe, I normally don't owe on my taxes, but this year I owe some money, and, and it's a significant amount of money. He said, I, I, I'm frustrated. He said, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a job that don't pay much, so I'm like, well, did you talk to your, your, your tax person? They, yeah, they went through all the numbers. They did everything, and I still owe money. I don't understand how I owe money. So I told him, I said, you know, I said, well, go back to the tax person and, you know I me, mean, make sure they got everything down. So he went back, called me back up. He said, yeah, it looks like they got everything down. And so I said to him, well, did you do this? He said, yeah. I said, did you do this? He said, yeah. I said, did you put this on there? He said, yeah. I said, did you put your son on the taxes? He said, my son. He went back to the tax, the tax person and called me back. He said, Mel, I forgot to put my son on the taxes. And because I put my son on the taxes, I ended up getting a refund. He said, it was because of my son that I was able to get a refund. Here it is. Somebody in here add the son, the S-O-N, he will pay a debt that you, you, he will pay a debt that you don't have to pay. All you have to do is just 
add the sun. Turn to your neighbor and say, just add the sun. Yeah, add, add the sun. Add, add the sun. Add, add the sun. I know it looks bad, but all you have to do is just add the sun. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left the crimson stain, but he washed me whiter than snow. Is there anybody here just thankful for the sun? All you have to do is just add the sun. I know your situation looks bad, but just add the sun. I know your situation looks hopeless, but all you have to do is just add the sun. Add the sun and he will work out your situation. Everybody standing to your feet. Perhaps somebody is in here under the sound of my voice that the reason why you feel left out, the reason why you feel that you feel like you're in debt, that you're in bondage, is because maybe you failed to add the sun. And the sun that I'm talking about is someone by the man of name Jesus who can give you a new life who can start you on the right path that while you are yet still in your sinful state he still chose to go to the cross for you so we invite you to come my brother my sister to come and know the man who can heal you and make your life right. Come on, my brother, my sister. Come on, my brother and sister. You can't make it right. Only God can make it right. brother, my sister. Bless you. 